Okay, so hello, um, everyone. How are you doing? My name is Lonnie Stewart. If you don't know, um, what's it called? Uh, and you are watching Indie 3 2014. This is day two. Um, we just did two panels. We did one panel here about uh, creating art, creating 3D art. That was really, really cool. And then we did a panel at the main channel with Austin Howe and Stephen Byron um, on, uh, what's it called? on games under capitalism. That was really cool. Um, if you if you were watching that, that was a really good discussion. If you're interested in more of that, you, you, there's going to be another panel, an extended panel on capitalism, actually, um, on Saturday. So there's a lot of good stuff there as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I, I mean, so right now, I guess, um, we're probably doing this. It should be a, an interesting panel. I, I'm just thinking we probably won't be going for an hour on this one. We might go for maybe half an hour, and then we'll see how it go because uh, this is a this is a, a short and sweet one. Um, I'm here with uh, Frank Wash. I'm here with Alex Gold. I'm here with uh, Khalif, and I'm here with um, with uh, Nemesis, particularly on the username. I'm not really. I, I forgot particularly what your name is. Nick. 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 It's right. Nick. Okay. Yeah. Because because yeah. it says that on the username. Um. And this panel particularly is about creating, designing games on different disciplines on zero budget, with no money. How do you make a game with no yeah, money? Um, poor. Yeah, we're we're and I'm I'm poor too actually. So um so this is gonna be cool. Um I'm actually here with, with Frank Wash. Frank, could you tell us exactly any particular background that you have that you think is worth noting? Hey guys. Yep. Um so uh actually three of us here, me, Alex, and Nick, we all used to be coworkers. Uh hey, you guys can hear me? I'm hearing a little echo. Okay, that that might be me. Let me mute myself. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, me, Alex, and Nick were all used to be coworkers at Harmonix Music Systems, um, working on stuff like Rock Band, Dance Central, and the like. Um, I worked there for about five years, and then I splintered off and uh, am doing my own indie thing now. I have a game up on Steam Greenlight. Um, I'll post the link up in here. And um, yeah, basically the idea is is that all of us are wanted to continue working on games, but more on our own terms rather than. Um, adhering to AAA schedules, politics, um, etc. You know, like, I don't have anything against working in AAA. It's just, it would, being India affords uh, a number of um, workflow freedoms that is, um, that can be really rewarding. But the flip side of that is, you know, as the point of the panel is, there's no money involved in it unless you're a brilliant um, developer like, Ken Levine or Tim Schafer, and you're just your name and face can get investors to throw, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars at you. And so Alex here has a game that has been released on Steam, which is fantastic. And he's gone through that entire process of uh, going from start to finish with um, with an entire game with a, with a full game development cycle with no real operating budget. And I'm kind of halfway there doing the same thing. And so, actually, uh, Alex, because you have the entire process down, why don't you tell us about your story, about uh, how you how you came up with the idea, um, and how you kind of convinced people to work with you? Because I think that's the that's the that's the big thing. Is like you, is, anyone can have a game idea, but game development is so you know interdisciplinary. It's impossible it's, it, unless you're you know unless you're uh, Joachim Sandberg or T.J. Thomas or someone like who can do literally everything, uh, finding someone to do art, music, programming all at once. Like you need to work with other people. And how do you convince someone's like, hey, I have a cool idea. It's an actual useful investment of your time. Please take this leap of faith with me, Alex. How did you do that? Uh, hypnosis. That is my secret. <laughs> no. Um, so basically, I wasn't particularly in a super good place, I guess you could say. I was also, um, I was also at Harmonix uh, with, with, with Frank. Uh, mentally, I wasn't at a great place at the time. I was kind of tired of the... Uh, there's a lot of noise over there on your end, Frank, I think. Um, I was very tired of um, the AAA cycle, I guess you could say, and I just really needed to do something, something different. So uh, myself and our coder, Jim Odermatt, uh, we just decided to team up. I'd had this idea kind of brewing in my mind for a very long time, but hadn't really done anything with it uh, until that day. And then we just started prototyping it. And once we got something that was kind of up and running off the ground, we're like, you know what? Let's just get an artist or two in here and just see what's going on, uh, what, what we could do with this. And we dragged some artists in uh, who were also friends of ours from Harmonix. And within a few weeks, we suddenly had something up and running. And then all of us were suddenly like, hold on a second, we could actually make a real game here. 
So what started out as, honestly, it was just going to be like a free Flash game. Uh, it was just going to be a silly little throwaway thing on a website. Just started developing. It, it, it grew wings and started developing into this big kind of epic thing that we all started pouring our hearts and souls into. Uh, so over time, it became more than just a three-man operation. We brought in uh, a brilliant audio guy and also a coder, uh, Joe Kelly. We started bringing in more and more artists that we worked with, uh, some of my friends, some of Jim's friends. And we ultimately put together a team of roughly around 15 people, I think we Good finished Lord. with. Yeah, all working for, for nothing. And we finished it. Uh, we released it, and then we got on Steam, and... That's pretty much how it went. I can so, break it down further, but that's that's the the high level. So how did you convince Joe Kelly to be like, hey, you know, you you have a forty hour plus, you know, forty to sixty hour week job. You should give up all that free time playing games and work on this thing. Like, how did you approach him and have that conversation? Well, I kidnapped his dog, and um, sorry, I gotta stop bleeding like that. Um, no, me and Joe were in a band together. Uh, we were really good friends in a band uh, uh, called Super Cousin. Uh, I would ask if anyone heard of them, but we were like, yeah, we nobody heard of us. Anyway, so we were in a band together called Super Cousin for a period of time. And I'm like, you know, Joe, uh, we were walking home together, and I'm like, you know, Joe, like, I'm working on this game. You interested? And he's like, yeah, I'm interested. And that's how it happened. Uh, Joe had actually been wanting to work on a project for a while, uh, doing more audio and getting into more coding stuff and you know we were already good buddies so this just presented him with an excellent opportunity to kind of expend uh, to kind of use that self part of himself that he wasn't that he personally didn't feel like he was getting at harmonics I mean honestly that's actually how most people came on board um, I love harmonics uh, make no mistake and I had a great experience with the company but the thing is in AAA development is you're doing nothing but the same game over and over again every year, like Rock Band, and then it was Dance Central every year, and everyone kind of wanted, I guess you can say an escape from the norm. Everyone wanted to escape from the, the routine, which is why we decided to craft this really insanely bizarre, uh, as I guess Frank is putting the link, thank you, Frank, um, or thank you, uh, moderators, um, this really bizarre title, this, this crazy game that was completely different than anything we were doing, just completely different than anything out there just so we could really pour our passion and pour ourselves into so um you know that's how it came for me and joe and jim uh and that's how it came for most of our artists just the need to do something different um so that's that's actually kind of interesting that uh typically uh finding co-workers within the triple a uh uh, hey, Frank, hey, Frank, uh, hey Frank. I think I think you're breaking up there. I can't really hear you. Hello. Did we lose Frank? It seems oh, like no. we. Oh no, Frank! Hello, I'm here. Okay, okay well, you, you just you just totally cut off for a second there. Yeah. Okay. Very weird. Um, can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you fine yeah, you're now. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so Alex, oh, it's in... oh no. <laughs> Everything okay over there? Is yeah, that, something up? I... Check, check, check. You're good. Yeah, you're good. For a second there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll keep talking about content and hopefully it, it, well, content will actually result. Well, well, yeah. Well, here's the thing: is if something goes wrong with your mic, we we, we um I I could take you back into the into the green room and then we could check it out and then and then the others okay. can talk around. Yep. So if if you need to if if, if something's up, then just let me know. Okay, that's, all right. I'll I'll keep talking. Yep. If uh, something's up, let me know, and what you and I can take me out, and then uh, Alex and Khalif and Nick can talk. That's totally cool. All right. Okay. Audience land said can hear us fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So so yeah, what I was saying was, um, Alex, it seems that uh, you actually benefited from having all your coworkers be former AAA, well, not former, but current and former AAA guys. Um, precisely because of what you said, um, the desire to work on something new. It's kind of interesting because I, it, it's it's tough to um, to get those connections sometimes because um, you know I I had a a person on Blood Alloy who was pretty defensive of his uh, you know he he wanted to work forty hours a week at his job and then beyond that he's like nope I'm going to spend that time doing my own thing and so uh, despite the fact that he was working in AAA um, he was actually proved to be somewhat difficult to work with. So um so yeah, I guess I guess it it really boils down to finding people who you gel with 
personally, Alex, it seemed that the large majority of your team were was coexisting friends that you already had, which is kind of interesting because Khalif I met as a stranger on the inter- internet, um, and so <laughs> this is this is kind of interesting as a different perspective. Alex, Alex uh, worked with former coworkers and friends and got a complete game out. Um, I have a team running, but uh, I think with the exception of Nick here, um, every single person on my team is someone I met through the internet. Um, you got to be careful with that, Frank. There's a lot of weirdos on the internet. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so with with Khalif, with Khalif and uh, most of my other artists, it was um, perusing stuff like uh, the portfolios on TigSource, um, Reddit uh, Game Dev Classifieds is actually where I found uh, Khalif's uh, portfolio, and I just started cold emailing people, and um, and yeah, somehow I tricked all you guys into thinking that wasting your time on this ridiculous BS is a worthwhile expenditure of your efforts. Um, Khalif, why don't, why don't we launch this, launch this into Khalif? What kind, you've you've worked for a, a large variety of people. You spend the bulk of your our time actually freelancing um what makes you decide to work on a project and for anyone who's listening who wants to like you know figure out like oh i have a good game idea i have a good prototype but i need an artist you know what what do do you want to hear and what do you want to see before um you decide to even start working on something uh i want to i want to note something uh, quickly though that 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 you that you you guys you guys should should keep swearing as as light as possible i forgot to note that before but i want to note that just now sure sure thing yeah just saying sure thing okay so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I have kind of a unique perspective because um, I'm a college student, and um, so I'm kind of looking for any way to make money. Basically. Uh, <laughs> but I think that one of the biggest things when I look at projects to either apply for or that people, like, send me and, like, hey, you want to work on this? Uh, the biggest thing that I look toward um, or look towards is just – like the history of a person, um, like if they've done other things in the past and um, what stuff they've done in the past. And along with that, sort of just um, – well, well, another thing that I look for is like if their project looks good, like if it's something I'm interested in, if they have like a prototype that looks fun or is easy to play or whatever. But um, another really important part is that if I just like the person, if they – like use proper grammar and seem like a nice person and um, just seem really, uh, I guess, authentic is the word I'm looking for. To throw in really fast, it's really rare to find somebody who uses proper grammar. Just so. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So somewhat, those are few and far between. Somewhat depressingly so. Um, yeah, and I think, I think actually uh, I, I definitely talked about this with Alex, um, maybe also with Khalif and Nick. I feel like there's a there's a trifecta of qualities that um, that you want to look for when work, when choosing a teammate, and that's uh, likability, slash like Henders, how, how how much you like them, how well you get along with them, uh, quality of work, and timeliness, and you need to have at least two. So you know if you like someone and their work is like eh, only okay, but they're always on time, great. If there's someone who's Real, does really great work, and it's always on time, but they're kind of a jerk. You're like, all right, you know, I'll over, overlook that. So, like, and you know, I guess the, the last the last possibility is um, someone you like and does really good work, but they're always late. You're like, okay, you know, it, it, it still can be a functioning relationship. But as soon as you drop down to just one of those three qualities, then you're looking at, you know, you might want to start phasing that person out. Um, and I, I think that goes, uh, goes in both directions. Like, um... I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pat myself on the back, by any means. But maybe I am. Uh, but like one of the one of the goals is like you know, Khalif, you're working for me for free. Nick is working for me for free. Um, I feel like I make it my personal goal to that it is just it does not seem right for me to expect you guys to do anything for me um, without without a paycheck unless I am like. Throwing, throwing myself on the coals and just busting my butt on this project. And so um, I, I think I, I've worked with a couple people in the AAA space that even even when there is a paycheck involved, that that I think just uh, appeals to project manage, management and leadership. That you if you you can you can be a boss or you can be a leader. Uh, I may not be a great leader, but I try to hope 
I try to be like, all right, if we're ha if I'm posting a meeting and I'm expecting people to show up with uh, with work done, then I have to, even if it's an art meeting, um, I'm not an artist, but I try to show like, hey guys, you know, I implemented this new AI, I've done this for the company, uh, I have this code in, and show that um, that I'm not someone who's just uh, giving out orders because that's that's that that. Um, What's it? It's the thing about game ideas. Um, oh yeah, if you if you have a game, like you know, a lot of people get into games who are high schoolers and are like, oh, I want to be the guy with the ideas. It's like, okay, you have ideas. Why don't you get you know at the back of the line behind the programmer with ideas, behind the artist with ideas, behind the producer with ideas. And so I I don't even consider myself a professional coder. Uh, my code is terrible, but I try to have as much done um at every every meeting that we can um just to, just to, just to basically honor i this sounds super cheesy but like basically to honor the sacrifice of time and effort that uh Khalif, nick and all my other teammates make um so yeah that was that that may have come out a lot more cheesier and emotional than i, than I meant it to but uh, hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think the um, the bottom line, at least that I that I find, uh, if you are quote unquote the team director or the team leader, uh, you you should probably be working about three or four times as many hours as everybody else combined. Um, that's mm -hmm. probably that's an exaggeration, certainly. And I've definitely got team members on Dark Scavenger and and uh, and our our new thing that we're our new secret thing that we're working on right now that um definitely rival rival me there's no question but generally speaking uh i find one of the best ways to motivate people is to show that you're motivated um i mean basically as as a team leader like you know what what you say how you act what you do is basically going to be carried on for the rest of the team uh, down to the rest of the team. So, for example, if, if people see that I'm happy and enthusiastic and passionate, that energy is going to be passed down to everyone else. But if I'm sitting there, if I'm miserable or if I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like working today because my cat threw up on my foot and I'm tired. Um, <laughs> that happened once. Um, then, um, <laughs> you know, that being said, uh, it's it's everyone else is going to feel the same way. Sure, their cat probably won't throw up on their feet, but they're going to be lazy and unmotivated. And, you know, the energy gets passed down. So as, as a leader, it's especially in a free project. I mean, the same is said on even non-free projects, obviously, but you got to have that passion. You got to be that motivation. You got to be somebody that people want to follow, that people have confidence in following into the fray, because believe me, you go into the fray. Um, that, that That's kind of interesting because, uh, Maybe uh, both Nick and Cleef have seen this. That uh, and Alex, I, I know, I know this has become this was critical for you for the past couple of years. Is that uh, when you're working on a project for free, you have to balance the impulse to be like, all right, this is something that I got to get out to market. I got to pay everyone, which is what I'm going through, versus just taking care of yourself. Because uh, I'm definitely, you know, I've I've <laughs> I've uh, uh, talked to Cleef about this. Like in the past couple of months. Um, you know, right now, Blood Alloy is hitting about the almost exactly the one year mark of its like official development. And over the past two or three months, I've not been taking good, super good care of myself. And it's definitely affected my ability to work and my ability to um, to be like a positive, a positive energy. And um, and yeah, and so, uh, Alex, I know you have like a, an actual schedule that you set for yourself. I don't I have my my schedule is terrible and i don't recommend it to anyone i basically um to pay the bills i tutor kids and that goes anywhere from like 3 to 6 p.m i wake up around noon uh do work tutor kids and then i pretty much alternate between looking around on the internet and uh programming until like four or five in the morning and um and it's really super those hours are super isolating and it's not a healthy lifestyle and, and i've i've recently just started to play video games again and it feels good to um to take some time to myself and um and yeah alex why don't you talk about your schedule that you that you that you set your, yourself because you're you're on your second project now and you've been doing this for quite some time so i think i i have a lot to learn from you yeah um yeah definitely like what you're doing right now frank for example like i that's the way i was in dark scavenger and i would not recommend it i 
I probably worked 18 hour days because I, I have a full-time job at the other company I work for uh, other ocean interactive, which is an amazing uh, place to work by the way. But that being said, um, I was working there and I was working on dark scavenger. I was easily putting 18 hours uh, a day and I was going literally insane. I used to like, I got so burnt out that it affected my job. I, I found that I ha I was taking walks at two 30 in the morning just to cool off it was brutal. My, my eating cycle, my sleep cycle got all sorts of messed up. It was real bad. Um, so basically, I learned a really good lesson, a really hard lesson about uh, pushing myself too hard, so to speak. So for tell, uh, yeah, this thing that I'm not talking about, uh, this new project, <laughs> that was close. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I um. <laughs> We've all been there. So, yeah, <laughs> that was a good save, right? Um, so for this new thing that I'm working on right now, um, I'm balancing myself um a lot um a lot nicer. Like what I'm doing basically now is Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I put in two hours a day. Uh, I put in two hours in each of those days just to work on things. Uh, Tuesday, I put in one hour, and then I have uh, a weekly check-in with uh, our coder, Joe, and also sometimes um, with, with other people on the project. Friday, I don't work at all. Friday evening, following work, I, I don't do anything. I leave that as my my free evening to go with friends, to just do whatever. Saturday, I work about 10 hours. Um, I get up pretty early. I head out to a coffee shop or a place I can work, and I just focus, and I just put in my 10 hours. Uh, it sounds brutal, I know. And I get home, like, I usually leave at, like, 10 o'clock, and I get home at 9 o'clock. That's not 10 hours. But, you know, it's pretty close to that. And then on Sunday, I don't, do, I don't do anything. I don't do work. I don't even check email. I'm done. On Sunday, I pretend that nothing else exists. I, I go out somewhere nice. I go to a movie. I do something nice for myself. That recharges me for the rest of the week. One thing I learned uh, really hard about um, one thing I, I learned really hard. I used to work for Vivendi, uh, which is a huge publisher, of course, now known as Activision. Um, not sure if Vivendi, that name even, even is still around. Um, it's been a while. But <laughs> at Vivendi, I put in so much overtime. I basically, I, I went super insane. I worked, like, if, if you think what I said right now sounds bad, I, I used to work, um, I think my record was three 24-hour shifts in a week, uh, in one week, and then the other days were 18 hours. Um, I used to go crazy, but what I realized is, um, you know, working on weekend, like, I work completely through each weekend, and what I realized is by doing that, you just become less and less productive. Like, even my bare minimum, and I know this isn't the same for everybody else, but at least my bare minimum, is one day off a week. If I can get that, I can recharge, and I'm completely good to go for the next week. But I have to give myself that, or everything suffers. My mood, my productivity, I need that, that space where I can just recharge. And that's what keeps me focused. That's what keeps me productive. And that's, so that's uh, my schedule. <laughs> and I think that's really helpful. Um, I don't know if you guys have one day. seen it. Have, have any of you four guys have seen the documentary uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi? Uh, no. Not all of it, but it seems good so far. Oh man, it's it's so great, and um, that that guy is like the epitome of hard work. For any of you listening who don't who haven't seen it, just very loosely, it's a documentary about um, this eighty year old guy. He's he makes sushi every single day of the year, and he has a um, he has a three star Michelin restaurant. Like having a single star Michelin restaurant is like a huge huge big deal. Having three stars is the maximum amount, and like the 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 prevailing thought is that if you were to fly to Japan, eat sushi at his restaurant, and then fly home, that the, it, it would be a worthwhile like expenditure of your money and of of your time. Like that's how that's how masterful this guy is in sushi. And something that he said in the documentary um, really appealed to me. And uh, and, and it, it's this this uh, he said um, to be a to be a good chef. You have to have excellent taste, and you have to constantly, um, you have to constantly be consuming. You have to be constantly eating and tasting, and constantly refining your palate. Oh my god! And you know, I, on the on the one hand, you know, um, a lot of people who think that oh, game development is just playing games. Uh, yes, you know, game development is hard work. It's absolutely hard work. But you have to take time, not for, not just for a personal level. But also for inspiration level and idea generation, and um, just getting a the, exposing your eyes and your mind to something new, you have to take some time out of the week just to play a game, 
um, you know, still think about it and critically think about it in terms of a design, uh, you know, implementation, artistic context, but just consume another piece of media in the field. Um, and that's something that, you know, for between uh, December and February, I just didn't play any games, maybe like half an hour to a week. And that's, you know, when I was working at Harmonix, that's all I did. I worked at Harmonix and then I came home. That's what I did. I played games, <laughs> like maybe three, four, five hours a day. And go, going to that shift, like really shook me. And it's been really refreshing because um, if you, 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 uh, you start to, you start to get a good feel of what's um of what's out there and in terms of uh, implement Im implementations like there there are lessons that i'm learning from um zone of the enders hd from uh, warhammer 40k you know games that are my, my game is a 2d uh, 2d platformer action shooter but i'm learning uh, all sorts of mechanical implementations um from a lot of other games so um so yeah so there there is that taking taking the time to spend time by yourself and to make sure that you still have time to enjoy and play games is really important um there was a question asked by somebody before um that i want to address because i think it's a good it's a good um good path of conversation to go down and the question was uh how often do you communicate because the reality is is um alex you were working locally with a lot of your friends uh i one of my artists brian was local but other than that every single one of the blood alloy uh, team members is uh cross cross country um we're all working remotely and so you know how often do you check in how often do you communicate and uh alex uh, I'll, I'll pass the mic so to speak to you alex in just a bit um but uh personally i feel like the if someone is giving you a deliverable, like if Khalif give me, gives me um, a piece of art that he's worked on, um, unless it's final art that I'm directly just going to put in the game and say like, all right, that's awesome, that's move on to the next, I, I feel like I need to get him feedback within 24 hours. I need uh, um, Khalif, does that, uh, does that gel with you? Like how does, how does that work with you know, your work experience with other projects? Yeah, yeah. that definitely checks out because like I, I'm – I'm working on another guy's project right now, and um, I think I sent him I sent him some work I, maybe in like the middle of May, and he just sent an email this morning, and it is, it's really hard to iterate on stuff when you forget it after like a week or two weeks or whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely within 24 hours is um, a real way to just keep everything going really smoothly and efficiently. Right, and, um, and actually this, uh, speaking of iteration, um, I think it is is actually somewhat rare to find. Uh, this, is, this is somewhat heartbreaking, but it's, it's it's it can be rare to find an artist who's committed to your project and willing to iterate all for free. And that's that that's what the hardest part is. Uh, we had an artist on Blood Alloy, and um, great artist, but they didn't. Uh, well, I would they would send me a walk animation, and I would be like, okay, this uh, can we work on this, this, and this? And they would get very persnickety about it and it would be i was like immediately i was like oh this is not gonna work out and that person actually quit the project a couple of days later and that that's there's a reality that everyone on your team is going to have to face the fact that like very often your first effort is just not maybe not not even not that it, it's good enough but there are um, for example, sometimes someone sends me an animation. I'm like, oh, for code reasons that this is not going to work out because, you know, this animation looks really cool in this instance, but then I have to factor in this other, like, there are so many reasons why your first attempt will not work, uh, will not work, uh, perfectly as an intended. And you need to find a group of people that's, um, that's mindful of that and accepting of that. And to make that process even work as Khalif, uh, as was Khalif was saying that, um, you need to provide that feedback instantaneously. Uh, as instantaneously as possible. Um, and with that, um, another trap that I've uh, seen some some people fall into is that uh, um, some artists want to really try or try hard to impress you. And so they'll go away in their hidey hole and be like, oh no, you know, like I, I don't want to show anything off because it's not done yet. Hello? Hello. 
jumping into um, going to a little corner and uh, working really hard. Um, and and then uh, the, then like a week, two weeks time, they'll show me something, and it's in some ways it's a masterpiece. But then I have to kind of break their hearts and be like, this is really amazing, but there's clearly a miscommunication here, and we're gonna have to pretty much scrap this. That's like one of the worst things that can happen. And so something that I try to um, get going on my team is like even if something's a rough draft it doesn't matter how rough it is like if you if we're doing an animation send me a send me stick figures first um make sure that we're all on the right path before you go and spend like eight hours working on something trying to impress the team which it's an admirable trait but like uh because iteration is so necessary and because there's so many factors that that um there, there, there are, there are, there are artists, there are artistic factors that I don't anticipate, and on the other hand, there, are, uh, there are code factors that artists don't anticipate, and to have that communication as early as often as possible is, uh, is really critical. Um, Alex, you had a really unusual uh, artistic pipeline for Dark Scavenger. Um, how did, how did that work? <laughs> it didn't. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, one quick note on that. In, in Frank, we talked about this before, but honestly, uh, if you have anyone, not just an artist, uh, obviously iteration is one of the most important parts of game dev, maybe design, code, or art. If you got someone or audio, if you got somebody who isn't willing to iterate at all, I got to tell you something, that person isn't going to last very long yep. in the get, industry. Get rid of them. Yeah, just ditch them. Any, <laughs> any part, like AAA, indie, like doesn't matter. Like If you cannot iterate or take constructive criticism like not personally like you will not succeed in this industry so that, those are just important things if you want to get into this industry yep if, if you can't take feedback you're dead because yeah. game development is 90 percent feedback so mm -hmm. yeah and it, it, it's 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 uh it's different layers of feedback there's there's um I'll I'll ask Nick for a sound effect, and he gets me something, and um and I don't know like I'm not a sound designer. I don't I mm -hmm. my ability to use words to convey the sound that's in my brain and have you make that sound it only goes so far. Mm -hmm. um, very frequently you'll you'll come up with something even better, but um but uh but yeah that that feedback is. is uh, is, is then communication is so important. I, I lost my train of thought, so let's let's just keep going. You were talking about my art pipeline, right? Oh yes, your art mm -hmm. pipeline. Yes. Yeah, yes. the, so the how... art pipeline that didn't really. Uh... Okay. So, so anyway, here's so how it give, works. Let's give the audience. A, why don't you give the audience a background on what your art pipeline was and how many artists you had? <laughs> It's just okay, so, so everyone knows what we're talking about. I was very new at the time. Uh, very very new <clears throat> to the whole game dev thing. So basically, just so everybody knows, uh, we went through maybe 12 or 13 artists on the project. Um, <laughs> I know that number sounds like a lot, but in reality, yeah, it's a whole lot. So basically, <laughs> um, basically, our art pipeline was, was such. So I'd draw these embarrassing stick figures in these little poses, and then I'd put a bunch of notes on it, and I'd look at the artist, and I'd hand it to him, and I'd be like, do this, but make it not look like this. And they'd be like, okay. Um, so, but basically, I was actually using a trick that my, my really good friend, uh, Jim Odermatt, who was also the coder on the project, used, and it's a brilliant trick. It's also a little dirty. Um, it's you give your artist something that looks terrible as reference, like something that you draw most likely, and what they do is they, something that you put together, right? And there's this competitive nature in people that they see this like, ugh, what is this? And they are determined to do better uh, than you did. So they make it the best thing they can possibly do. It's it, – that's – that's bad. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's a bad thing I, I did, but it actually it worked really well, and a lot of people respond well to it. Some people don't, but we'll get into that some other time. Um, but basically, uh, the, other, the other thing that I, I try to do with, with the projects I work on, too, is instead of having some sort of like dictator vision of the project, what I do is I try to give just enough information – oops <laughs> – I try to give just enough information to the – Alex, you're cutting off a bit. Yeah. Poor Alex. Alex, no. Everybody's <laughs> cutting off today. To oh. me. Oh, oh, Alex, hey, hey you, oh. might, you might want to rewind a bit there because you, you just kind of cut off for a few seconds. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. By the way, it's I'm in here now. It's your boy, Tron Maximum. 
What's hey, up? Hi, Tron. <laughs> what up? What's up? Um, I, I heard we were doing a panel on, uh, you know, on, on making game games with zero budget. <laughs> Yeah, that's not... I'm all over that, as you can imagine. <laughs> the, 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 life. If you have anything to say, that's totally cool because this panel is just gold. Honestly, I'm listening. I'm listening in the background, and I'm just like, oh my god, yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm actually pretty interested to hear what you guys were talking about just a couple moments ago because I might have some things to say. So, um, Alex, if you actually just want to rewind and repeat what you were saying, we can just yeah, keep going sure. back from there. Yep. Yeah, sure. I'll just rewind that thought. So basically, um, so the way that I, I look at the way that I look at projects, the way I do things, not just not just uh, on my indie stuff, but also on my professional stuff, is instead of taking like a dictatorship approach where it's like this needs to look exactly like this and this like this, that kind of thing. What I actually do is I, I kind of believe that to make a game truly great, you know, it's like a band. Like you have to have input coming from multiple people. It's multiple visions that form together to create a coherent whole. So basically, for Dark Scavenger, what we did, for example was I would create a very rough outline, something that would look kind of kind of, kind of sketchy, uh, sketchy, no pun intended, and uh, just something that didn't look particularly great, but it would have just enough notes on it, like, you know, make, you know, I would just basically lay out what I needed to accomplish from a narrative design perspective and a functional design perspective. I would lay that out very concisely to the artist, and I'd say, as long as it follows these guidelines, I don't care what it is, it is good to go, and we will put it in the game. And generally... Uh, we got results. What this approach actually did is not only it gave them some freedom and some flexibility to say, all right, I see these design pillars. I'm going to take this so much further than he originally you know, gave it to me as, and I'm going to do this and this and this with it to make it something you know, that not only fits the game, but it's something that, something that the artist can own. Um, so basically what I, what I got were these incredible pieces uh, for Dark Scavenger. I, I did not see them. If I had sat there and been like, hey, make his foot like this, turn his arm like this, if I had been a dictator, I wouldn't have gotten these great results. But because I just gave freedom to the artist within these uh, constraints, uh, what they produced, they actually wanted to work on it. They wanted to do this because it wasn't just mine. It was theirs. And that's how you know one of the ways I kept people motivated through the project uh, by giving them ownership. And that's ultimately what helped get us through the entire thing. Someone, as someone who, um, I don't mean to interrupt, but like as someone who um, focuses a lot on doing work by himself, I have started looking into doing more cooperation, like with Jesse Burnett at Super Blizzard. He's been helping me put together Joy Lancer and make it like even better than it was like when we originally announced it. And we're also um, working on another game that we're going to be officially announcing soon called Desperado Voyage with three other um, comic artists that live locally. And that that whole point about like only having some restraints, like not twisting their arm is a really, like really good emphasis point because um, with Desperado Voyage especially, um, within the first like three or so days of like putting together the concept for the game, I already had like, like two drawn backgrounds and like 17 different character designs just because was, i was just like do do you keep this in mind but do whatever the hell you want mm -hmm. that's exactly it uh one of the when i was working at harmonics in fact uh it, it, and this is so important i think one of the keys to getting a project done you see it on on paid games uh like like bigger projects and then you see it on it's especially true in indie projects is to make sure that every developer that works with you or underneath you or however you you view the hierarchy every developer on the project no matter where they are has ownership in it they need to have something that when the final product is done they can show their parents and say that's me and if you can get that factor for them then it, they will bring their full effort out. They will bring their full passion out because they know they're not just making this for you. They're making it for them, and that's how you, you know, really do collaboration well. Speaking, speaking mm -hmm. as a uh, as an as a pixel artist who does animations like for a living, especially in like commissionary work and stuff like that, I find that the the less um, creative liberty I have, the harder it is for me to work on anything. Like it's just it's just like if I feel like I'm putting something together that. I don't have much of a say in I'm just not going to be interested in doing it because I have a certain way and a certain look that I prefer to do stuff and like if I if I can't express at least some of that it just feels too constricting and then the motivation is just instantly gone and just like doing doing like any work on it is just because it's like instant like falling asleep like studying for your final fall asleep kind of thing where it's just like you just really don't care but you know you have to do it you know 
yeah, yeah and especially especially when you live um when you live like an entire lifestyle based around that it can get really hard just just to be like a person because that stress piles up really really fast and a lot of people usually aren't ready for it mm -hmm. uh, yeah for sure i want to jump in because this whole um this whole conversation makes me feel terrible about the things that i do to Khalif. Because, uh, <laughs> because, uh, oh my so God. T TJ actually has done, um, has, has done an animation. I contracted him for an animation my game, and uh, I gave him some loose guidelines, and he brought the heat, and that animation is like one of the one of the best animations in our in our game. <laughs> with with uh, Cl um, Khalif, uh, I'm a I'm a I've spent six seven years doing martial arts, and Khalif hasn't. I love you, Khalif. <laughs> I'm not saying this. Just saying. So, uh, so, so, so sometimes, like, I'll work, I'll work pretty closely with, uh, with Cleef to be like, all right, um, you know, if we're if we're conveying power through this animation, try to do the rotation of the hips here, his rotation of hips here, and I worry, Cleef, how you don't you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, my workflow, but if that workflow stinks for you, by all means, tell me so. Yeah, but for the audience who wasn't here earlier, Cleef and I are actually working together on this project. So if you need to say it out in public, Frank, your workflow stinks. We need to change this. By all means, tell me. But um, Cleef, do you, do I, you I, have any, I actually just wanted feedback? to wait until now to say that I quit, but I don't. Um, <laughs> no. That's pretty much it. <laughs> He's working with us now. <laughs> um, no, but it's it's a little bit difficult. Um, just there, there's a time when you have to really ask yourself, why am I in this? Like, why am I making art? Um, because there's there are going to be times when you're going to have to reiterate and reiterate and reiterate. And sometimes you just got to let that go to a different person. And, like, can't let your feelings get hurt by it. Like, um, especially when you see how much better another artist can do than you, then it's a lot, it gets a little bit easier, especially if you think of it as, like, hey, um, this is for the better of the game. I'm not that big of a deal. Um, this is good for the game, even though it's not the best for me right now. So, um, Khalif, yeah, I, I, I wish 10% of the population was as magnanimous and good as a person as you are. Then the, not even 5%, then the, <laughs> then the country would be a better place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on it. Uh, Nick, uh, Nick, what, what do you have to say about... Um, about working, uh, working with people from a sound design context, because you know, art, art is one thing. Because you can say like, oh, I can see with my eyeballs that I don't like this color, I don't like, uh, you know, this animation here. But sound requires like a really unique perspective for iteration. And as, as we said, you know, establishing good communication, good feedback cycles, etc., is all critical to working on a project together, especially when there's no budget involved. Um, what advice would you give to any of the listeners to be like, hey, if you're working with a sound guy, be mindful of X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that, that helps me is references. Uh, sound is so subjective. You know, people love all different types of music. And, you know, I might hate the thing that you love. And there's no reason for it. It's just we all have a different opinion on stuff. Same thing goes with sound effects and 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 anything else that's in a game. So references are the best the best tool for a sound designer to use to convey uh, your your message and your dream on what you want your game to sound like. Uh, you're very good at that, Frank. You send me YouTube clips of like you know tons of different games. Be like, I want it to sound like this, but have a little flavor like this, and and it's been working out really well. And uh, I mean, I, I feel I, audio is usually one of the last things to go in. Um, we we usually operate after art is done, after animation is done, mostly for timing. Um, so it's one of the last things we usually crunch like, right at the end of a project. Uh, that goes for indie and AAA. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just send references, send a clip of the animation, like things like that really help your, your sound designer work efficiently and quickly to, to turn around those sounds so they can get iteration from the designer, from, from who's ever in charge and like whoever has the, the vision. Uh, turnaround is the quick thing, is, is the most important thing, quick turnaround. Awesome. Um, Alex, do you have any thoughts on, um, on communication with the team? Like how, like, you know, all of, especially 
Indy, TJ has managed to found success in uh, in being able to accommodate his whole lifestyle around this. I am not able to do that. Um, I don't. I think Nick, Nick Khalif, and Alex. I think all of us primarily pay the bills in uh, in our in our day jobs, and for the most part, our team members do the same. So that being said, when when you know that team members are working, you know, 40 plus hours a week on something else, Alex, what do you think is the best way to, you know, keep, uh, keep talking to people and keep checking in with your teammates? Because, you know, like, it's like, Hey, you had a really long crappy day at work, but I need this tomorrow. Like, how do you, how do you keep people on task and how do you check in with people? Uh, so basically, well, when I live locally, I used to live up in Boston. Now, for anyone's reference, I'm living up in uh, Newfoundland, St. John's, which is an island. Uh, I think it's the most eastern part of North America. So uh, a bit isolated now is what I'm saying. But anyway, when I lived down in Boston with uh, most of the team, what I used to do is <laughs> what I used to do is um, every week I'd actually schedule a meeting with uh, whether it be an artist or whether it be a coder, whoever was working on the project, and I'd, I'd, I'd actually take them out to lunch uh, just to check in. So, so what that did obviously was some incentive to meet up with me. Hey, I'm going to buy you lunch. Like it's a free lunch if anything, even if you hate my guts, it's a free lunch, <laughs> right? So, so like so the whole <laughs> like indie budget with zero budget is actually somewhat of a misnomer because if you can't even afford to like buy someone a slice of pizza maybe maybe working collaboratively on an indie game like yeah i i, I try to um do the do the same thing when when khalif was uh khalifa was start first started working for me before we really got to know each other i was like hey just to show you that i'm not like you know a bag full of hot air like i'll paypal you 15 bucks so you can buy yourself like dinner or something so um, that yeah. seals the deal let me tell you oh no 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 for sure no i mean it is completely true though like i mean one one thing like one other thing that that motivates people to to meet up with you is just really uh you know not be a horrible person um you know if you if you're if you're a good person and if you're you know easy to work with if you get along well with people you're gonna have a lot more it's like an easier time getting people to actually show up um like i i try to become friends with honestly everyone i work with i mean you know and even if even if people end up leaving the project i we stay friends um i just try to generally make sure that you know i'm i'm there for people when they need it uh and you know if, if i can't really afford to pay people obviously but if something goes down like i mean like you know, if if someone's like, oh my god, my computer part just to totally broke. You know, I'll see what I can do to see if I can scramble together any money to to help them repair. Like, I don't pay people with a salary, so to speak, but I I will do absolutely anything for anyone on my project uh, to make sure that they are happy and motivated, not just on the project, but just in their daily lives, right? Um, so that's that's one that's one piece of incentive uh, that I have. The other the other thing too is, um, you know, maybe this is a bit of a side track, um. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, now that I work remote, um, it's it's a lot it's a lot difficult, more difficult for me because nobody that I work with is is anywhere near me anymore. Uh, so basically, what we do is we just we have a meeting every Tuesday at a certain time or every Sunday at a certain time, and we just kind of establish a routine, and it just becomes kind of commonplace, right? I always meet with uh with with our coder Joe uh, every Tuesday, and we meet for for so long, and I meet with uh you know one of our artists another time. And basically, we just kind of try to figure out and establish a really common good routine. And we always, you know, we keep the meetings light. We always go over stuff, but we always start by just hanging out for a bit, talking about the latest games. And we usually close that, that way, too, to make sure it always ends on a positive note and starts on a positive note. And we talk about the game stuff in the middle. So we, we keep it concise, but I, I try to make sure, you know, we keep it friendly. That's what's important. So, you know, team members are coming back to, you know, not some, some tyrant as stated, not some not some jerk who's gonna you know who's who's controlling the project or who they don't want to see but you know obviously you know somebody who's who's there and genuinely cares about yeah, you know yeah. their life so to speak so i find yeah. just by being a good person that tends to go a real long way yeah don't similarly be... um the uh the concept of meeting in another place is like especially over the last couple of weeks when i've been meeting up with my crew to do desperado voyage work i've noticed that like when we're in that area for the most part that's like all we do like if we're we're in this studio area so now we're working and we're coming up with concepts and we're sharing them with each other and we're like just bouncing off left and right but we're keeping it like not not stressful so that way nobody really feels like they have to get something done by a certain time 
and usually when you when you do that and make it so like okay have this done by 4 30 if you don't do because they don't have to worry about that stress of making it look a certain way at a certain time it just happens naturally yeah definitely i mean it, it, it's good to set like like certain deadlines like if you say like you know we need to get this done by like five but at the same time or should i say not not artificial deadlines i i think the better way to put it is like for example on our project a while back we were trying to get a build ready for uh this, this new thing we're working on uh which i can't talk about <clears throat> uh <-huh>. um <laughs> we were trying to get a build ready for uh for gdc so basically that gave us all a concrete deadline right it's not something that i'm enforcing it's not something or it's not something that i'm just making up this is a solid concrete deadline that all of us have a common motivation to work towards because we want to present it here and that helps get everyone focused and get everything ready uh in time and that's how you got a lot of work done is by finding real deadlines that with real meaning is the big is the key word. If um, everyone can benefit immediately sooner, that's usually when it gets way better. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right. I like everyone talks about how, you know, crunches crunch is awful, especially in the AAA. And like, yeah, like unmitigated crunch, especially unpaid crunches is, is a is a piece of poo. No one no one no one likes that, no one needs that. But if it's a type of crunch that's crunching for a deadline that everyone has, uh, that everyone's invested in. Like as, as to both uh, TJ and Alex and Philippe and everyone has said that when someone is personally motivated in seeing a project grow and be like, all right, this is now like, not just a reflection on the project, this is a reflection of me and my work, then you then channeling that into, um, into a deadline. That's often where you see uh, the best work. And because of the, um, because of the threat of uh, time, time being, you know, the single hand most valuable resource other than money and food, um, because of the time that you often see really creative uh, solutions and, um, and you see a lot, uh, you, you, you start to learn what's most essential about your product. Because when you're when you want to get something together, show something off, and there's no way to get literally everything together, you have to choose what's most essential about your product. And often you learn like, oh, this is like, you know, this, this other aspect, this other feature I was developing for this game, that was all fluff. I need to, you know, focus on perfecting like this slice of the combat, something like that. Um, I, yeah, I, I just want uh, okay. I, I need to, I need to interject because, because we have about eight minutes or so left. Um, so, so y'all, y'all pretty much, uh, you probably pretty, did a pretty good job making the hour. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I really, yeah, so, right. so y'all nice. have about eight minutes left or so. So if, if you have any particular things you really want to get there, you should probably do that right now. I'm going to, um, okay. ask the chat as well. If they have any particular questions they want to ask, if so, you should ask them now and we'll see if we can get through them. Um, so anyway, yeah, it is actually, well, so. it is actually worth noting that, um, we have nothing on the schedule next, so it's okay if this bleeds out a little longer, especially since I came in so late. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that, I, 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 I need to bail at eight, but, uh, at 8 PM at, at the hour, but, uh, but yeah, you, that you guys can do what you want. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, I mean, I, I figure, I figure it might be appropriate to just bail 8 PM because, because then we have it set and we're good and it doesn't kind of bleed out. Yeah, um, in, in a, in a we'll, we'll see what but, happens. Yeah, basically. we'll see what happens. But but I mean, I, I guess I guess Frank, I guess you have about five minutes. Anything you really want to go into? Um, cool. So, yep. Uh, I think we actually covered a, a pretty wide breadth of topics. Um, I'm happy to let any of you, uh, the other four guys, talk, or uh, happy to address anything from uh, from the chat. Yeah, I just want to reiterate um, the absolute most important thing in making a game. Um, and I, I've covered this already, the absolute most important thing about making a game for zero dollars is to make sure it's something everyone wants to do. Not just you, but everyone needs to have it. Everyone needs to feel like they are part of it. They need to be a part of it. Uh, it's it's that passion, it's that drive for what you're working on, not just from you as a leader, but from every member of the team that is going to see that project through to the end. And if you don't have that, if you're working on something you don't truly believe in, you are not going to make it. Exactly. And if you really don't believe in it, then that's going to... Like that alone is what causes a lot of deadlines is when you have people who don't feel like the project's going to go anywhere or the project's going to make it. And so they stop and then that stops the whole operation. And then you have to start spending like dedicating time to finding replacements and stuff, which is a problem that I had a lot, especially in my earlier career as a game developer, when I was originally like trying to set up teams. Like I had, I had like this phase of like, okay, I want to be a game developer. I want to do this part. I need to get a team together. And then at some point I was like, okay, screw teams because this this is just proven 
to not work out on multiple occasions and there are just so many games that i haven't been able to like go farther into because of the fact that i just keep losing team members and then recently i've been like okay maybe teams are actually pretty all right if you get the right people you know yeah it's just finding the right people it's the hardest thing i mean myself um my 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 the coder i work with joe joe kelly and my in my my business uh marketing guy like kyle perry like who i'm working both working with on this current project uh are just like two of the most dedicated amazing people that i've ever worked with and and honestly to find people like that is so difficult you go through so many people before you find people at that level with that drive it's the hardest thing you can do yeah for sure especially when especially when you have to actually like start looking for people for your projects because that means like you're you're probably not going to have an open i mean you're not probably not going to have like people on the side ready to go for for you you know because um like be, just because those kinds of people are hard to find so chances are if you're trying to form up a team you're going to end up like doing like a public post and getting a huge amount of submissions from people that you probably aren't going to work well with and then it's just like especially when dealing with that for a long time it can be kind of demotivating but once mm -hmm. you actually find those people who are willing to like see this thing through with you to the end it's like it's like one of the most amazing things in the world basically yeah, yeah I Oh, sorry, go, on, go ahead. Go on, Frank. No, 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 you go. I've been talking too long. You okay, go yeah, I, I got to leave in a couple minutes. So I want to I want to uh, leave on on this thought that I had um, speaking to Alex, you brought this up just a few minutes ago. Um, it all it has to be so there's this intersection of games that haven't been made yet. Uh, games that you want to make and games that you have to that, that you want to play. And really for a game project to be meaningful to you or to a team that member, it really you really have to hit all three of those factors it has to be something that's not quite been made yet something that uh that they want to play and something that they actually want to make um the very first project that i worked on um was a project that uh my my goal in it was to develop uh something for a design portfolio and so i was developing an ios app uh, an ios game that i thought was uh, pretty feasible that it was very attainable and I was like, oh, it would be cool to like make something and, uh, you know, to have it. I was like, oh, that's something I released. Um, and the project fell through like every small, like minor difficulty that we have like shot past through on Blood Alloy was like a huge pain in the butt with this other project because like it, it was I was doing it because I thought I could rather yeah. than having that internal drive and be like, no, this is a game that I want to play. This is exactly. like something. Yeah. And so that's that's hugely important. As a as a commission artist, I get myself caught in that very, very frequently, almost regularly, really. Okay, so we, we, we literally just hit 8 o'clock, um, so yeah. we, we just hit 8 p.m. EST, so um, I think we're going to have to close it off um, with, with Frank's thought there. Sure. Um, so thank all of you for coming. That panel was amazing. I sat there in the background. I would have I would have loved to come in earlier, uh, but, I mean, yes, um, I, 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 I was I mean, managing... I, like 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 all, all indie three. I, I I mean I'm happy you came in anyway because you, you brought some really good insight. I mean all of you just rock that. I just want to say that and thank everyone who watching this. I hope all of you got something out of this. Um, so I really really appreciate everyone coming. I really do. Um, so I mean we're gonna have to close it off with there. Um, but I mean uh, we have another panel. We're gonna take an hour. We have nothing in the hour, but we're gonna have another panel. Um, at nine o'clock. Um, and that panel is going to be, let me check right now, video games and streaming. So it's going to be a general panel of video games and the lifestyles of streamers, and that's going to be with uh, Twitter names by Winningism and Squeaky Bee. So you want to be there. Um, uh, it's going to be good stuff. Zolani, uh, Zolani, can you do do me a favor, and uh, can you repost uh, the links to my game and to Alex's game? Yeah, yeah, like, hey, if you can. A vote, oh, on, uh, vote yes on Greenlight. Oh, I, absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't have the links, though, um, but if you can give me the links, absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll post okay, um, and right also now, I think if you, I think Alex Gold also had links as well, because 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 yes, we, we totally totally I, post uh, those links. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got mine coming up. I'm posting it, so I think one of you mods will have to repost it. Yeah, I'm gonna um, repost it for, and then I'm I got Alex's right here. Yes, I here got it. All cool. right, that's my that's cool. mine. A, a vote yes on Greenlight would be wonderful. Here is Alex's game. Uh, it's really cheap and it's one of the funniest games I've ever played. It is hilarious. Um, Thank you. So so yeah, guys, uh, ch check it out. Yeah, it is self promotion. <laughs> time. It's right. always self promotion time. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Buy, buy a copy of my I mean, magazine. Exactly buy the Arcade Review. channel.
Uh, yeah, so... Uh, bye. bye, Joy Lancer. <laughs> bye, Joy Lancer, too. Bye, bye. All right. Uh, yeah, so, so, so yeah, uh, thanks. All right, guys, thank you so much. Th thank, thank you, you for so, coming. Yeah. Um, um, thank you all for, for watching. Thanks for... Uh, um, and, and thank you, Zolani, for managing the stream itself while we were taking care of uh, the Indie 3 channel. Yep. And and so so thank yeah, you. Yeah, we, we were trying to get some stuff set up over there, and I had to take over for a little bit, so I couldn't join in immediately. Yeah, that's, but that's, it was it was both of these have been really fun so far. Yeah, it's totally cool. So so thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you at nine o'clock. We'll see you later. You're watching Indie 3 2014. We will be right back.